Managing the Brief Decline in Productivity After SharePoint and Office 365 Deployment During SharePoint and Office 365 adoption, it is normal for productivity to drop slightly before getting back up again. It is crucial that you manage this change process effectively to avoid discouragement among end users. You can take simple steps to make this transitioning period shorter and less disrupting. In this short video, Richard Harbridge, CTO at 2 to Lead, explains how you can approach the task. To watch the complete one-hour video course on how to improve SharePoint and Office 365 adoption, click the link below to go to visualsp.com. I want to also touch upon something really quickly here, which is another false perception, which is that, you know, one, we don't want to have a negative impact on people's work, so we don't want to necessarily introduce a lot of these changes, um, or we want to defer or delay a change. Now, uh, it is true with any with any new technology, uh, especially in the productivity space, so Office 365, SharePoint, all these things fit within this category, um, you are going to see a dip in productivity. Now that dip is because people are learning how to do things in a different way. Instead of using file shares, now I'm learning how to use SharePoint or OneDrive for business. And so there is a small uh, negative consequence impact here, right, where I'm just not as fast, I'm not as efficient, I'm not as effective at doing it. But that tends to be a very short period of time, and then I get into I'm more productive in this environment because unlike the file shares, I can access those from anywhere. Um, it actually gives visibility because when I store my data in OneDrive or SharePoint, uh, with Delve, it's discoverable by other people. So there's all sorts of other perks and benefits that are coming along with this simple change. Uh, and the key here is what we can do as IT is we can help manage that change. Now I'm not saying you need to coach every individual user, but there are things that we can do um, like providing training opportunities, providing pilots and other things like that to reduce the risk of negative consequences causing the user to transition back to a legacy or alternative technology. So let me give you an example. If, if I'm training and learning a new technology as a user and I'm doing it during training, that's a place where it's okay to be less productive. Right? It's okay to have an impact on my productivity. And so in that scenario, training is kind of making this a safe area so it doesn't have the same type of negative potential impact where someone says, oh, this is just too much work, I'm going to switch back to the old model. Because by the end of that training, they're already on this upward curve. That would be one example of a potential goal. Another thing to consider is that we can accelerate this change. So if we um, do things like, uh, and I'll talk about it later, awareness campaigns and we do uh, other things as IT to help help educate and inform the organization, often we can actually accelerate how quickly people get to the positive impact from these changes. And so if we can do that, there's substantial ROI and, and other factors to consider here. Is that a question? Oh, looks like a, just maybe an audio uh, accident there. So. Um, the other thing to note is I have heard this many times from other IT organizations. Well, we'll just do it at a later time. You know, we don't need to prioritize it now. There's millions of other things that we need to do first. And what I would suggest there is you just want to make sure you understand where your industry is and where your organization is from an IT perspective, especially when it comes to these patterns of productivity and collaboration. And you want a real outside opinion on this often because your internal opinion might be biased. You might think, you know, you have a much stronger competitive advantage when it comes to technology than maybe you do. And so looking at that, if you're far behind the, the rest of the world, um, you are putting your organization at a competitive disadvantage due to the technology. Your productivity is not going to be as high um, and your the tools that people are going to use uh, when you have a larger and larger gap tend to be alternative or unsanctioned tools. They start to use Dropbox, they start to use these other tools that maybe you never wanted to have within IT but now you have to support and now you have even more change management because you're not just transitioning people from legacy or traditional methods to new methods but you're also transitioning them from you know modern tools to a different modern tool that you'd rather them use for governance and a variety of other IT reasons. If you would like to automate training and support for your team, install Visual SP, the plug-and-play, instant, and context-sensitive self-help system for SharePoint and Office 365 end-users. Over 2 million users in over 200 companies are using Visual SP to boost end-user adoption and reduce the burden on their IT support teams. Using Visual SP's step-by-step -step intuitive guidance tools, let your colleagues get access to help wherever and whenever they need it, Facilitate employee onboarding with always accessible tip sheets, annotated screenshots, step-by-step -step walkthroughs, and screen capture videos. Accelerate user adoption of your business workflows and improve productivity. To request a free demo and see how Visual SP works, click the link below to go to visualsp.com.